how you doing? Thanks for tuning in to Down to Earth with Day Day King. It's definitely a pleasure uh, to have my next guest this evening. Uh, has a very unique story that I feel is very important, and uh, it, it's certainly a, a story that uh, needs to be told, which they're actually already telling the story and have been for quite some time. Uh, our guest tonight is the son of the, uh, what is called the, the father of the Samoan Fire Knife Dance. And if you can, I uh, welcome to the show with me, uh, Mr. Tui Leituli. Hey. How are you doing? I'm good, man. All hey. right. Good to have you on the show tonight. Yeah, this is, here's the book just so that you can oh, see oh. that. This needs to be up right here like this. <laughs> That's how we got to have that. Yeah. Okay. Are we good right All there? Right. All right. So as you can see, uh, the family already has the official book here. And uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about the life of uh, Mr. Freddie Letuli and uh, also Tui Letuli, the son. And uh, let's go ahead and get into it. Sure. So, um, Tui, uh, can, can you tell me how it all started? Can, I mean, because I'm very interested. Yeah. And so here's my chance. And just t tell us, for those that don't know, how everything started. I mean, where, where's your father originally from? Well, he was, uh, he's from American Samoa, mm -hmm. and he was um, born in the village of Nuuli. Okay. Uh, came from the Tamo family, and um, uh, his dad, my grandfather, passed away when he was about two years old. I mean, he was okay. young. Okay. And so uh, he was raised by his grandmother, mm -hmm. right? So uh, he was raised in Ili'ili and, and, you know, taken from one village to the other to Leone, because yeah. his... Um, father was Olo from yeah. Leone, and so he would be in down in Fuaron, living in, in, yeah, yeah. in our beach area out there, and and so. Um, but uh, yeah, that's where he was. He was he was raised. Okay. And uh, when he was about uh, when he was a teenager, I mean, he was fascinated with dancing. Mm -hmm. You know, especially the Samoan dance. Uh, uh, he was always being creative. He was always inspired. Once they saw. I think it was Leato was doing the Nifo Oti dance. Yeah. And so my dad was so yeah. uh, intrigued with that oh. that he wanted to start doing it too. Yeah. But uh, and then he took those knives when he left Samoa mm. on on a, on a yacht. It's a longer story. I'm I'm, I'm shortening it for you. Well, but let's he, don't he, let's don't get too yeah. short. <laughs> let's get to the. But but he the... did go to Hawaii and he yeah. started dancing there. So I mean, okay. that's how he made his living. Okay. And from there, uh, he. Um, Went up to California mm -hmm. and um, went to Hollywood and the rest is history. He worked in the film industry, became a stuntman, and, and of course he worked in all the shows, uh, Seven Seas. And well, before we get too far, uh, let me ask you this. Now, am I correct when I, I did a little bit of research, so sure. I kind of did my homework okay. before we did this interview. Good. Um, am I correct when I say that uh, Freddie Le Tuli actually started out uh, tap dancing? Absolutely. Well, that's where he got his name from. Is that where that's where Freddie came from, that's, right? Well, he was the first one to order uh, those tap shoes from uh, Sears and Robux. Okay. He was probably the first one ever in Samoa to order tap shoes. The first Samoan. <laughs> Samoa to <laughs> order from Samoa, right? Yeah. <laughs> so when he when he got those shoes, uh, he started taking it to the Malayan Fong Kongo. Uh, you know, yeah. That's where the naval beach was there. You know, all yeah, the yeah, yeah. all the sailors are all over the place. You know. Okay. So. So when they were showing all these movies, I mean, people were always inspired. Fred Astaire was young back then, you know, his right, movies right, around, right, right. you know. He was the hit guy, you know. Yeah. So yeah. my dad was would get those shoes and he would start, you know, teaching himself and doing the <laughs> tap dance. And, yeah. And, you know, I, when I hear the stories, you know, guys were throwing pennies, nickels. If somebody threw you a quarter, man, they, you, that was good money. That was good money then. <laughs> yeah. That was so, a lot of money then. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, of course, all the guys would call him Freddie. For Fred Astaire, and that's how he got his really? nickname, Freddie. Wow! And he took Freddie all the way to that was his stage name. That was it. Yeah. Well, that's nice. That's. And now we got a beach called Freddie's Beach in Fuamolo. So, you know. Really? Yeah. And to think that it came from Fred Astaire. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, you know what? There's always a story behind everything. That's right. Everything has a story, and I'm learning that more and more. Um, so, at what point did your father actually decide that he wanted to do the Samoan knife dance? And and what prompted him to take that level to, to introduce the fire to the knife dance? Um, 
you know, back in back in those days, I mean, you always have to come up with the next best thing, mm -hmm. you know, to sizzle the crowd. I mean, but first of all, he was he was a born entertainer. He just that's what he loved to okay. do, okay. and he loved he had a he had a fascination and love for dancing. Mm -hmm. uh, from the elementary schools in Villela or in in uh, McKiffey or in Leone when he went to school there, mm -hmm. and uh, always involved in dancing and 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 singing, and so. When he went to California and he started dancing here, um, he had a chance to go dance in San Francisco. Okay. And so that's where it all started. When he, when he was getting ready for the show and there was some parade was going on, and then he saw a Hindu guy eating fire. Mm. And then he saw, they were practicing, and so they saw the other girl, she had a baton, and they had light bulbs at the end. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So she was trolling it. Yeah. And he kind of just put through together. Just he says, well, wait a minute, I have my yeah. my new foot. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And he says, what if I put fire at the end? And so he went and got his towel that he had, cut it up, and got that. Asked the, asked the Hindu guy to, to put some of that gas on it. He lit it on fire, and he just started trailing it, you know? So he just grabbed a, a solo, ripped it up. That's right. And, and tied it tied around, it around there. there. And he, I mean, from there on, he just got creative from there. You know, he said he tried all different types of... Uh, fabrics and then one time he did a show in Hollywood and uh, mm -hmm. there was a, uh, uh, a guy that came that worked with the movie industry and he says hey listen I, I know a better way for you to keep your fire on there because yeah. my dad was burning himself oh and he was gosh. I mean he was going through the trial and errors <laughs> yeah. to try to perfect his ends, right, ends right? right right his routine not only that you know back in those days you know people weren't accepting fire in their in their establishments it was a bit uh, over the top. It was over at the that top. Time. So listen, we don't want that fire in here. You're going to burn our place down, mm. right? So yeah. there was a lot of, you know, it, I'm thankful that he continued on because whenever there was a show outside, he would put the fire on. Mm -hmm. But uh, a lot of people were telling him at that time, you know, that's not going to work out. Mm -hmm. It's not going to work out. The fire, you know, right. people are not. They don't want it. Right. You know, right. just stick right. to your nifa Right. And right. so uh, for a while there, he kind of stopped. But whenever there was shows outside. He would always put it on. So that getting back to the uh, the the movie guy, the guy that worked at Hollywood for the movies, he told my dad to use asbestos. asbestos. He said you tie it, on, yeah. you know, and then he said it would soak. And he says not to use gasoline because it evaporates so quickly. Okay. He says use fluid, you know the lantern fluid. Yeah, lantern oh, fluid. Oh, okay. And so um, so that's how he got it started, and, and the rest was history. From there, they just perfected how to make it better and better throughout the years. Okay. Well, you know what? Uh, that, that kind of brings a thought that, that uh, kind of threw a thought in my mind about how your father just was looking around at certain things and put two together. That was a very innovative move <laughs> for, for that at that time. Right. To have that thought just jump into your mind. He was innovative. Right. He was innovative. He was ready for, he was creating as, and, and making history. You know, I, I, I tell you, um, there's, there's certain things that echoes in my mind when I hear my dad speak to me. It didn't always go through the other ear, but <laughs> it went in front of my head and <laughs> stuck in there somewhere, and I'm and I, I am able to, to find what he, you know. My dad always says, you know, he says, um, God created you in his image, hmm. which allows you to be creative. Wow. Very nice. He says, be creative. Very and nice. that's how, how I've always been, too. I love being creative, yes. you know, putting things together and yes. so forth. Yes. Yeah. All so, right. Okay. But, uh, you know, from then on, I mean, it was, it, he did not know that this was going to be his legacy. He never knew hmm. that he was going to make a difference right. in this art. I mean, right. even when it came down to the slap dance. Right. I mean, right. back in the days, everybody just slapped themselves. Mm but he was the one that really put into a choreography mm -hmm. so that it worked because that's what was demanded when up here in, the, in, in Hollywood or in the mainland, people were looking for shows. They were looking for something very, and choreographed. Polynesian, yeah, but Polynesian dancing at that time was in. Yeah. You know, the Polynesian oh, well thing. That, 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 was a big, was in. that was a big thing that, that was, hit Hollywood. Yeah, it sure was. Big, big thing. Yeah. I mean, they, um, Gilligan's Island and all, yeah. you know. Well, even back in the days, you'll see him in a lot of movies. Uh, Sailor Beware. I mean, he does a new Oti. He does a little slap dance, you know. Okay, uh, so 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 speaking about that, okay. Um, your father has been featured in movies. Yes, he's been featured in movies. Talk about that a little bit. 
You know what? Uh, when he first came up here, he realized that, I mean, he always wanted to be in the movies. I mean, ever since then, Samoa, when he said he was young, he was fascinated by the movies. Mm -hmm. So coming up here to California, and, and a lot of the guys that he met up here, a lot of other Polynesians, they were already doing stuff in the movies. So he kind of like fit right in. Mm. And I remember in Samoa when, when all of a sudden we get this check, right? And my dad's, you know, this is like late 70s, early 80s. He's, he's left Hollywood for years. Mm -hmm. But he was in Screen Actors Guild, the union. The Screen Actors Guild. Yeah, SAG. Yeah. Okay. So, and then he gets this check from SAG <laughs> out of nowhere. And it was when he used to uh, ride bareback on the first Davy Crockett Disney movie. Wow. And he was doing stunts on that one. Nice. So yeah, but it, in in the book, you can see there's a lot of uh, uh, photos of there. Of, in this book here, yeah, that book right there. Okay. Have you seen that yet? Uh, I haven't. Yeah. I haven't. I haven't had the, the opportunity, but I uh, I will now. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. All right. Well, um, now moving moving through a little bit further after you know him going into movies and and obviously traveling all over. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that, him traveling with his show? I know that he held a lot of events, right? Yeah, he did. Okay, can you talk about well, you know what, maybe he, some places he, that he went? He had so many different, uh, uh, back in those days. So he had a group called the F Freddy Latuli and the Flaming Swords of Samoa. Or he had... <laughs> Man, that's a name. Yeah, so now he that's had a name. Freddy Latuli and the <laughs> Samoan Warriors. Yeah. So he had Freddie Latuli and the Wild Hawaiians. Okay. So he had all these <laughs> names that he would use. Yeah. But uh, he opened Sahara. Okay. Uh, in Las Vegas when it first opened. Uh, so, he so hold on a second. Let's yeah. pause. Okay, so Freddie Latuli was there at the opening of the Sahara yeah, Hotel the in, Las yeah, Vegas. in Las Vegas. Now, that's a legendary hotel. Yeah, absolutely. And he was there to perform. Perform. Open it. Wow. Uh, but he was, uh, I remember, you know, seeing pictures of him in places that he'd been. Like, they would send him to New York, Chicago, all over the United States. And then from there, he was... Uh, uh, they they wanted him in, in Europe. So he was in Europe. He was in Japan doing the Farnack dance. And this is mm -hmm. back in the 50s. <laughs> he's just so moving and grooving. Yeah, he's just doing it. Yeah. Uh, there were was, there was some great things that my dad had. Uh, uh, and now, this is all the stories that I get from other people. Okay. That he was, he never, he never wanted to hoard everything. He always gave opportunities for everybody. Mm -hmm. Even when he had to move on to another show, he would find somebody, take over that show. Right. And he'll go right. do that show. Okay. And then he'll go, you know, I mean, he was constantly going. Okay. And okay. he was constantly helping other the youth. Mm -hmm. He was constantly, and, and that's why I started the Pacific Talent Academy of the Arts here. Okay. Uh, where we help a lot of the youth. And, and so, okay, so the name of that is, is what again? The Pacific Talent Academy of the Arts. Pacific Talent Academy. Of the Arts. Of the Arts. And I started and founded that, that organization um, because of my dad. Okay. I, I started because of him, because mm -hmm. that's what he always did. Mm. He was always helping the youth, and he's, I've seen it you know, throughout my life, yeah. how he lived his life. Yes. And how he constantly would, you know, uh, he'll give his last dollar to you. He'll, we would, we, I would drive with him, and we would stop in the village, and he'll see some guys working. And he'd stop and he'd say, hey, we'll go. I, you know, have you guys <laughs> eaten? Yeah. And he said, yeah. And then we would go back. He said, yeah, right back. Yeah. Then we would go and go back he and would buy some food. Yeah. And you know, what I didn't realize, that he didn't even know these kids. Right. And they were like, just, they were like, wow. Yeah. Uh, you know, so those yeah. things like that, I, I make it really hit me. Well, of course, I mean, of course. I learned those things from him. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's uh, that's a very giving, very giving spirit. Very giving spirit. Listen, he had a lot of grace from me, <laughs> and, and and I will never forget that. Yeah. You know, of all the things that I've done, I was thanks, Dad. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he was he was in uh, he was an amazing father. He was an amazing dad. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Now, uh, I also understand that uh, that your father was involved in politics in Samoa. You know, when he went back to Samoa. He went to, uh, they, when they asked him to stay in Samoa, mm -hmm. um, then he became uh, a chief. He became a high talking chief Oilo. Okay. Um, okay. That's a Matua from Leone. Okay. And so he took that title. And then from there, he also became a senator. He served as a senator for uh, 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 that county. And then uh, 
And then from there, he became a, uh, an associate district judge. In so he, he, he actually became a judge after serving, as a, after serving as a senator. After serving as a senator for several years. Right. And what he did was, you know, there was so another. I, 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 I don't mean to interrupt, but yeah. I mean, I, I, I got to say, I mean, <laughs> to go from uh, being the father of the Samoan fire knife dance and yeah. traveling all over the world and, uh, and gracing people with his, his, his performances, uh, to have that career alone in the movies mm -hmm. and all these things to go back to his homeland and now start out a political career yes, and become a senator for several years and mm -hmm. then become a judge. Yes, I mean, how many people do that? <laughs> well, he did that with, uh, I don't think he graduated from eighth grade. Okay. So, okay. and you know, I heard a great quote, and I think it was Jim Rohn. He says, uh, formal education will get you a job, but self-education will make you rich. Mm. And and and, Very true. and I Very take true. that as being rich in knowledge and and because you know right. you right. can be in a classroom but it doesn't end there. A classroom is your lifestyle and what you do, and what you learn. So he was self-educated and throughout the years, um, you know he just, you know he never, there was uh, he he gave me something really special. That he says there's nothing you can't do. You can do anything you want to do if you believe in yourself. Right. Yeah. Right. But, but I have to tell you this, mm -hmm. you know, when, when I say that believe in yourself, he always made us believe in that. And that because if you believe in something, then you belong to that because you cannot belong to something you don't believe in. And so when you, when you belong to, to that, then you become that, mm -hmm. right? And one of the most important keys, yeah. and, and I write this on the introduction of my book that I'm mm -hmm. writing, and that is to bestow. And that if there's one thing that he showed me, was to bestow your, your gifts and your talents to other people. And that's what he did. If you read in this book, you will see uh, a, a lot of the, a lot of his protégés or a lot of the guys that, uh, that he taught, that's all they talk about. They were so very thankful that, that he taught them his, his art, his gifts and his talents. Okay. All right, well, I'm just trying to bring up here, uh, uh, and if we can, Let's go ahead and take a look. I want to. I want the viewers to see. Okay. This is the home that you were. Yeah. That you were raised in. Uh, let's go ahead and bring that up. Take a look at that. Now this is a. This is the home that you were raised in. Um, Actually, the house that we're looking at was yeah. the house that came later. I was so very thankful that my dad had built huts. Yeah. We actually lived in huts back in Samoa in those days. There was right. no electricity. Right. There was no water. So we would have to there was a there was a vaipuna that yeah. was just a little bit a little bit further from that. So when the tide went away, you can get fresh water and we'd mm -hmm. get all our buckets and mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. uh, my brother and I uh, we used to just climb the coconut trees if we were hung if we were thirsty, <laughs> you know. But uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We used uh, those little Kerosene lanterns, you know, there was no electricity at all. Right, right. Now that house there, that, that was built, uh, your father had that ho home built? Yep, he built that house. He designed it himself, and and that's where you see the two big knives. You see they, the knives there. Yeah, that's uh, made out of concrete. It survived several hurricanes, and, but uh, it's still standing. Is it still there? Yeah, it's the two biggest knives in the world. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest new <laughs> in the world. Wow. wow. Right. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. All right, now, now can you tell us a little bit about the uh, the competition that uh, that, Absolutely. He, that he started? Because he did start a, a very uh, successful competition. Right. right. Well, you know, I, I have to go back to the fire knife competition that started in Laia with Polynesian Culture Center. Oh, in Hawaii. And and I remember, right. yes, and Pulifano Galea, yeah. who's like an older brother to me, mm -hmm. and um, we lived together in Samoa, and uh, we always looked up to him. Uh, he came and talked to my dad about that that's what he was going to do and we were so excited that he was going to start that and what a place to start that in at the Polynesian Culture Center so Absolutely. you know it's it's been over 20 years and it's so successful and and because of that so many of the it, it really helps the youth you know because now all the so kids So he was there at the start of the Polynesian Culture Center in Laie. Well uh, the not the Polynesian Culture Center but yeah. he was there you know when Pulfana was talking to him about the fire knife competition. Okay. I'm just talking about that. And then okay. afterwards, then we started another fire knife competition in Tutuila. 
Okay, you, that was something. just before my dad passed away, and Polifano came for that. Okay, and then um, there was one in, in Polu, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Lenny Leota started that one. Mm. Great brother, a great fire knife dancer as well. And then we started one here in Anaheim mm -hmm. uh, in 2003, 2004. Okay, so and we've had one since. Yeah, and so we just moved to Long Beach, but we've been over there for ten years at. Uh, at Pearson Park Amphitheater. Well, yeah, that's uh, that that event. You're very well known uh, for that event. Yeah. Uh, you know, all Polynesian people in the Southland of California and uh, surrounding areas yeah. uh, are aware of that competition and uh, and frequent that competition annually. Correct. Yeah. yeah. All the proceeds of all those events that we do goes to helping the youth mm -hmm. for the Pacific Talent Academy of the Arts. It's our nonprofit organization, and it's. Uh, our mission and mantra is to raise the bar and educate the passion of the youth, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. our Pacific Islanders. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I also speak at a lot of the high schools. Okay. And so and they, they have what you have, a male academy mm -hmm. through the NPIEN with uh, Victor Thompson. Mm -hmm. And so, and there's a lot of other leaders, uh, Pacific Islanders, that are in the community that we all take turns speaking at different high schools mm -hmm. just to raise the bar, just to help some of these kids get their GPA up and to graduate. And we have a program. It's called the Keepers of the Flame, mm. and which and comes that's, from that's exactly this. Keepers of the Flame. Keepers of the Flame. Which, which, uh, uh, um, coincidentally, it's, it's, it's honoring my dad. It's honoring your father. Yeah, yeah. and that, and then that, uh, that's to teach the kids everything that we can. Like everybody from the community mm -hmm. that have a talent, or whether it's business or whatever, we're asking them to bring their gifts mm -hmm. so that we can teach the youth. And everything's free. None of us get paid. We've been doing this for over 10 years, okay. 12 years now. So you volunteer. It's all volunteer basis. Mm -hmm. And um, and I tell you, when people ask me how much do I make doing what I do, I says, you know what? All I can tell you is that I make a difference, mm -hmm. just like everybody else, every other volunteer that, that comes uh, and helps us with all the events that we do. So the one that's coming up, September mm -hmm. 12th and 13th, that we have a uh, we have a, our fire knife dance competition. We have our Ito competition, which is the International Tahitian Ori. Mm -hmm. Ori means dance in Tahitian. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the theme for that is Faito Ito. And yeah. Tahitian means to thrive for the best. Mm -hmm. And then also we have Hula exhibition. Okay. And coconut husking and everything else that can go on over there. And some good food. Yeah. Some great <laughs> vendors out can't, there. Can't forget the good food. Oh, man, I'm telling you. That's cooked there. Uh, yeah. we, we have a program where we give scholarships for Pacific Islander kids. Uh, for culinary arts mm -hmm. uh, at the award-winning culinary arts school right here in Harbor City. Mm -hmm. The director there is uh, Giovanni Delazario, okay. great brother, okay. and he's there to help, and they've, they've been so supportive in helping the youth. Well, that's, that's great. That's great. I mean, the, everything that you've said here tonight uh, has certainly lived up to the ex my expectations of what our interview was going to be like. Uh, it's very nice hearing the, the stories that you told uh, you know, about your father and everything that he's contributed to uh, you know us as Polynesians, um, I mean, he took the fire knife or the knife Samoan knife dance to another level. Was innovative with coming up with the adding the fire in, and since then it became history. And now everybody knows the fire knife dance, yeah. and that's practiced all over. And that's that's uh, our culture that we yeah. can hold close to us, and uh, we can thank your father for that. Thank you. Well, you know, I want you to keep that book so that you can read all the stories and, and catch, oh, up on, me? catch up on everything oh, oh, else that's on there. All right. Okay. Um, <laughs> I have to tell you, uh, this book was written by my, my mom uh, in Samoa. Mm -hmm. um, okay. She right. And I have my other mom in, in Hawaii, mm -hmm. uh, Lani McIntyre. But okay. this is my mom, uh, Patricia mm -hmm. Latuli, and uh, she was the one that was able to finish the book okay. that my dad wrote. So they wrote it together. But... You know, um, he passed away just before the book came out. Okay. Okay. And so um, you would read some fascinating stuff in there. So well, I definitely she has it. she has been um, uh, the powerhouse holding the fort back home in Samoa. So I'm looking forward to seeing her. So she's there now. The family. Yeah, she's there with my other brothers and Very sisters nice. and Very nice. brothers and sisters in Hawaii, somewhere in Reno. Now, how far you know, Chicago? How far is uh, where your mother stays from Ilili? Fongamo is just right down to the coast. It's not far at all. Really? Yeah. Okay. You know, in fact, you know, that's part of the Tualauta County, so that is Ili'ili and Fuangoho is 
is the same. Okay, okay. And she's staying in that house? Yep. She's staying. <laughs> and so I'm looking you guys, for you, you gotta love that. You gotta love that. If you've seen this house, this is an amazing home. Uh, as you can see, you've seen it here tonight. This is just a legendary home in Samoan. Of course, uh, who else to, to uh, be, uh, who's, who else's home would that be other than the father of the Samoan Fire Knife Dance? So um, I want to thank you very much, uh, Tui, for coming out here tonight sure. and, and uh, interviewing with us. It definitely was a pleasure having you here. It was an honor okay. to be here. And uh, thank, everyone, thank you all for tuning in to Down to Earth with David King. And uh, make sure that you tune in next week. As you know, I will have another uh,